I already love rebel headquarters. Don't you love rebel headquarters? I'm so glad to be talking about progressive issues and talking to progressive candidates. We talked to Kaniella Ng, he's in a district that's Democrat plus 17. So a Democrat will win it. The question is which Democrat, a progressive or, or, or one that's more corporate? Well, we have the same kind of question in Nevada and that brings us to our next guest. So Amy Vallala joins us now at rebel headquarters. Uh, Amy, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, another Justice Democrat, uh, another progressive, another fighter. Uh, so uh, in, in your district, Nevada's fourth district, it's D plus three, that means Democrats have an advantage. Um, and you already have Democratic incumbent, uh, uh, Ruben Hewen, uh, but he's in a world of trouble. Um, yes. So let's just touch on that for a second, and then we'll talk about your priorities. Okay. So uh, what did he do? Uh, you know, because a lot of times with the first thing that Democrats say is, well, you have an incumbent. What, what do we need a right. challenger for? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, I got a lot of that. Um, but he has been accused of um, sexual assault on one of his staffers. Um, her name is Samantha. I think it's important to say her name. Um, and she felt so uncomfortable and was propositioned so many times by Ruben, even after repeatedly turning him down and letting him know that she was, um, she had a boyfriend. Uh, that she quit her job and it's unfortunate that she doesn't want to be involved in uh, politics any longer according to what's been reported. So, um, and the, the sad part is that this was reported to uh, the Democratic Party in, in Nevada and he still was pushed through. Mm, yeah, so um, you're a just Democrat, so no corporate PACs for you? Correct. Okay. That's absolutely correct. Uh, so let's talk about your priorities. So if you were in, 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 in his place, what would you be fighting for? I would definitely be fighting to get money out of politics. That's very important to me because I think a lot of the issues that we have all stem from a lot of our representatives being bought for less, but less of a better word. Um, and also, you know, it's very important that we're addressing women's issues. Um, of course, Medicare for all, which most people who know about me know that that's something that's uh, very important to me. Um, you know, we need to be addressing, you know, a livable wage. Um, and also housing, um, there, there's so many things and they're all intersectional. And I think for anybody who's running for office or wanting to, to hold, a, hold an office in our um, government, we need to be willing to fight on all fronts because they all are so intersectional. So I'm definitely looking at making sure we give back the power to the people. Yeah, and, what, and Amy, what did you do before running for office? So uh, before I began activism, I was a CFO. Um, and I got involved in activism um, really on the heels of my daughter's death. So that was the thing that really got me very politically involved. I, I went through a long period of pain, uh, about a year, I wasn't able to function um, until I heard of something called a single payer for my husband who happened to be from Brazil. So this was nothing new to him. For me, I was like, "What is that single payer?" I, you know, I, I'd never heard of it. So I went to a uh, at a single payer conference and uh, met Nina Turner, and she lit a fire under me like nothing oh, else. I love that. <laughs> I didn't know that story. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so she met me. I was just coming out of grief. I was crying. I was there talking to her, and her speech. You know, she's such a motivational woman. She's exactly what we need in this country: war women coming out and taking leadership roles. Um, and she was just telling me, I remember her telling me, you know, I have to dig really deep. You've got to fight. And, uh, and I decided to come back and do just that and, and fight for others. I can't save Shalin, my daughter, but hopefully I can save other people, whether it's from health care or poverty. You know, everyone deserves to have a life and to have food over their head, food on the table each and every day. So if some of you still don't know who Nina Turner is, she's not part of the Just Democrats. She's the head of our revolution, that was Bernie Sanders group, and she's wonderful. And so I, I, I had similar experience with her. It's great to hear that she got you to, to fight back. And, uh, and, and by the way, whenever we interview anyone here, the links to how you can volunteer for them, donate to them is uh, down below. So in, you, in the description box, you could always click that uh, and, and so, I know it's an emotional issue, but, but but what happened to your daughter? So my daughter, Shalin, she was 22 years of age. She decided to move out um, to live with us in Las Vegas to complete her schooling to become an RN. She was working two jobs as a CNA, you know, making minimum wage. So she had worked her butt off. She was self-sufficient. Um, when she arrived after the drive for 22 hours, she had a red swollen leg. 
my daughter presented to a local ER with a red swollen leg. Um, it's, it's very uh, important to note she was also African American taking birth control. She had sickle cell trait and she had just driven that long drive on, a, on an injured knee. These are all huge indicators um, that she had a blood clot. Um, they had her looking up for her, you know, calling our insurance company in the waiting room. I got phone calls, I was out of town on business, you know, that they're making us. And I was like, you know, just don't worry about this right now. We'll take care of the financial stuff later. The next call I got from her was crying in the back and she's crying to me. I still can hear that in my head today. Mommy, they're not helping me and I'm in so much pain. And uh, they, they specifically told her when she asked for something for the pain and some further diagnostics um, for her, her leg to go get insurance and see a specialist, they were not a doctor's office. Uh, they violated EMTALA, which happens all over this country. They treat patients now as if to not find anything, it's called a wallet biopsy. And they give the bare minimum possible. Um, and she died in my arms. And um, that was the defining moment in my life. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to get emotional about that. I happened to, I had a, a, a loved one die from a blood clot uh, and I had a, a, another loved one who uh, died because of internal bleeding because uh, they wouldn't treat him. Uh, and so it, I, I feel like asking for uh, healthcare is the bare minimum. That, you know, the rest of, unfortunately, not just the Republicans, but a lot of the Democrats make it seem like we're asking for the world. We're just asking for our life, right? Right. Just, and, and Medicare works. People like it. It's popular. Why can't we all have it? And, and so it, it wasn't too much to ask for your daughter. It's not too much to ask when you're going to go fight in Congress for it. But this is why I, I love what you're doing, what, what the just Democrats are doing, because you're a real person. And you and and you know, oftentimes they'll like, oh, are they really qualified? You, if you don't know, CFO is chief financial officer, right? Yeah. A successful person who wants to do the right thing and and get money out of politics, etc. If it's not the incumbent, uh, they're going to run another corporate Democrat against you. Yes. So, what do you need to you think put you over the top and be able to get this victory? It's very important that on my um, next filing, which you file quarterly, that we. We show viability. We are in a really hard push right now um, to raise $100,000 by the end of the month. Um, we also have a huge, huge uh, district um, that has includes a lot of rural areas. And so we need to get ready for the ground game and to get some uh, field coordinator in and ready to hit and knock on every door and make sure we're getting that message out there. And also not just Democrats, but also reaching across the party lines and ensuring that we are pulling as many people as we can. Because when you start pe speaking to people about the issues and that's what you're talking about, you know, majority of Americans want the same thing. And that's what's on the progressive agenda. Look, Republicans don't like corruption either. And they also want to make sure their loved ones don't die. Right. We're, and we're actually here to help you. I know a lot of times they don't believe that, but we really are. And yes. and you can do that if you're uncorrupted and you're not taking corporate PAC money. So uh, all of the, the luck in the world to you and, and it doesn't have to just be luck. That's why we got the links in the description box. If she hits 100,000, you know, and there you have the, the, the website, how to volunteer. If you're in our district, please volunteer. Uh, and and that makes all the difference if you're knocking on doors, making calls, etc. And but getting to a hundred thousand, maybe it shouldn't matter, but it does matter. Right. And I wish all the progressive groups would be on your guys' sides, uh, right. no matter what. But oftentimes you have to convince them too, yes. right? And in order for them to consider you viable, so right. let's let's get you there so that you can fight back, you could and you could serve in Congress and make a difference. Amy, thank you so thank much. You so we really much. appreciate you joining thank us. You. Uh, all right, guys, this is how we fight back. And I'm so proud to support all these candidates. And I love that this is the, the hub for progressives. So thank you, Amy, go get them. Let's go get these uh, people in Congress. Uh, for the members, we've got uh, the post game coming up next, tytnetwork.com slash join. Thank you, and we'll see you there.